All right, to get started on the Smelly Cat hip pouch, you will need to print out the pattern pieces. Um, make sure that you open the pattern using Adobe Acrobat Reader, and then you want to print at 100% or actual size. Make sure um, fit to page is not selected in the print in the print settings that will cause the pattern to not print correctly. Um, you'll want to check that your pattern is printed correctly by measuring the one inch square on each of the pattern pieces. Make sure that it measures exactly one inch. And if you want to print only the pattern pieces, you'll print pages 11 to 12. And if you want to print the whole pattern, that's fine. Um, I like to print page two that has the cut list. So here I list each of the fabrics and what pattern piece or cut or um, measure and cut pieces are cut from each fabric. So I also have an additional cut list on the pattern piece pages. The same information that's listed here, but that you could store with your pattern pieces if that's all you print um, for future use. So to get started, we'll cut out our pattern pieces and you just cut directly along the solid black line. Alright, once all the pattern pieces are cut out, then we will cut our fabric. So for this bag you need um, three different fabrics and then a fusible inner a fusible woven interfacing. So I have my main exterior, um, which is just the body of the bag, will be cut out of this Essex linen. Um, my lining is going to be this aqua colored, and I'm just using a quilting cotton for everything, um, and the linen, which is a little bit thicker but very similar. And then I have this as my exterior contrast. Um, the exterior contrast will be for the pocket, the front pocket, the pocket flap, the strap connectors, and the adjustable waist strap. So if you want, um, you could use webbing for the waist strap or a different fabric for the waist strap and those connectors if you don't want to use the same fabric as your front pocket. So keep that in mind. Um, so the pattern pieces are cut on full. How I like to cut my fabric on the fold. I'll make sure that this part is on the inside, not showing. Lay the fabric on the fold. And then I like to cut around it with a rotary cutter. Um, if you choose, you can trace this onto the fabric and cut it out, or you can uh, pin it on and cut with scissors, whatever way you like to do it. I know some people are not comfortable using rotary cutters, and that's fine. All right, so we're going to fuse the interfacing to the fabric. Um, each piece of fabric has one piece of interfacing except for the lining front pocket piece. 
Um, and the interfacing that we're using for this is a fusible woven. So I use um, Pellon Shape Flex SF101. There are other brands of fusible woven interfacing available. Um, so just use whatever is your favorite. Follow the directions for fusing your interfacing. Um, Pellon, I always spray it with water because it will shrink. I let it set for a second so that it kind of shrinks up and then fuse it with a hot iron or with a heat press. Since this is just small, a small bag, I'm not going to bother using my heat press. All right, for step number one, we are going to cut out the zipper placement on the main exterior pattern piece. And then on the wrong side of the main exterior panel, you will use the pattern piece to trace the um, zipper placement. Just make sure that you have it lined up so that your box ends up being straight. All right, and now you will place um, one lining main right sides together with the exterior main and just make sure that it's centered. You'll notice that the lining main is slightly smaller than the exterior. Um, so just make sure that you have that centered and then I'm just going to clip these together. I actually am going to do it this way. Um, these clips are from warmino.com. They work really good on um, flat items. Okay, and then I'm just going to sew directly around this box. I'm using a shorter stitch length for that. Um, so I have my stitch length set to three. And I just sew directly along the lines. I almost went too far. Stop with your needle down at the corner to pivot and turn and then stitch up the short end. And I kind of will slide 
my fabric to, if I don't end directly at a corner, I'll um, lift my needle up and slide the fabric slightly to get it lined up directly over the corner. So now we are going to mark a line directly down the center of the box that we drew, stopping about half an inch or so from each of the ends, and then from the end of that line to each of the corners, you'll draw another line. So it's like that. And then you can either go to, go to a rotary cutter or use your scissors to cut along that line through both layers of fabric. And cut up all the way to the corner as close as possible without cutting through the um, stitching. So now I'm going to um, go to the iron and first I like to, I'll press the lining um, up at the bottom seam and press that and then I'll push this down and press this seam, push these over and press this and then push this over here and press this and then pull the entire lining through the box. And it seems like if I kind of pre-press all of those seams and then flip it through, it's easier to get it to lay flat. All right, the box is pressed well, and now I want uh, 13 inches of zipper tape. Um, if you cut it a little longer, that's not a bad thing. You just don't want it to be too short. I'll show you the reason why. Um, so if you use zipper tape, zipper by the yard, um, you'll have to put the pole onto the zipper tape, and there are different tools for helping you do this. I've seen people recently in the sewing groups using um, like towel holders or something that they buy on Amazon, but I really don't have a problem sliding the pole on, so thankfully. All right, and I'm going to use um, double-sided tape to hold my zipper in place. And the reason we cut the zipper longer is so that it will extend past the sides of the lining and that you don't have a raw edge of zipper um, exposed inside the lining portion of your hip pouch. So I'm just going to um, put a line of tape and I get my double sided tape from Wawak, Wawak.com. Um, I don't think I ever say that right. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but um, it can kind of gum the needle up a little bit. So I just try not to stop with my needle down in the tape for long because that, it, that's when it gets kind of weird. Um, and you can just wipe your needle off with um, alcohol 
if it's too sticky. So I'm going to place my zipper right within the hole and I'm going to flip it over to check my placement and make sure that I'm happy with where it is and I'm not. So I only pull um, one side of the tape off at a time. And I want my zipper closing. Yes. So when it's from the back, my zipper closing to the right so that on the outside, my zipper is closing to the left. Um, you can also pin your zipper in place or you can use like scotch tape to hold it down. Um, I use glue sticks a lot and I find that method works out okay for me. I do that more when I'm using um, like a number three zipper or an all-purpose where the zipper tape is only one inch wide um, because then the double-sided tape is um, too wide to use on it, but that the sticky part will stick out or be exposed off the edges. Okay, that looks lined up pretty nice, so now I'll go ahead and remove the backing from the tape on the top. And I'm really taking my time on this um, since it is visible on the front of the bag. Now I'm going to increase my stitch length. I have it at four and a half. And I'm just going to start, I always start at the bottom left of the box. Um, do a couple stitches and then back stitch a few stitches. And then I'm just going to sew all the way around the box using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can move the zipper pull out of your way as you get to it. And as you sew over the ends, there's no concern about sewing over the nylon zipper tape. It's fine to just sew directly over it. And again, I always stop with my needle in the down position when I pivot the corners. Um, my zipper and zipper pull are also from mormino.com. I will link the website in the description. Um, I've said it before, but these are my favorite zippers to buy because she sells them in um, like pre-cut packs and the colors are already put together so I don't have to think about what colors I want. I just buy like one of each pack and then I'm good to go. I have every color that I need. All right, so you have some excess zipper back here and we just wanna leave that um, so that it will get sewn into those seams. So we're going to set this aside for right now. All right, for measuring and folding the card slots panel, um, we are going to start on the left side. The first line that you measure and mark should be three and one quarter inches from the edge. And I try to make this um, as exact as possible. And I'm marking on the wrong side of the fabric, so I'm definitely using a pen that's not removable. So just make sure it doesn't bleed through your fabric. Or use like a fabric marking pen. I just wanted it to be visible. So the first line is three and one quarter. And then from that mark, 
um, two inches and then we alternate two inches and two and a quarter inches. So the next one is two and one quarter. That's line three. Line number four is two inches from that one. Line number five is two and a quarter inches from that one. My neighbors are cutting down a tree if you can hear that. So, um, And then the last line is two inches from that. And then we'll just have this excess remaining here. All right, so then to fold that, at the first line, line number one, we are going to fold the fabric wrong sides together and press. All right, and then fold the fabric right sides together along line two. So we're folding this in an accordion style, and this is for card slots, um, so that way you have the top and then the bottom of each card slot are what the folds are for. All right, line number three is again wrong sides together. All of the odd number lines are wrong sides together. Even number lines are right sides together. right sides together in this line. We have two more. So we'll go wrong sides together. And I have you cutting the um, card slots panel a little bit long in case this isn't 100% exact and then you trim it to the correct length at the end. Um, so that way you don't end up with a card slot panel that's too short. It's easier to have it start a little bit bigger than needed and trim it down. All right, and from the right side, it should look like this now. This is your three and a quarter section, and then you have one, two, three card slots. I'm just going to press those all well, and then we'll go ahead and top stitch along each of those top folds. So once the card slots panel is um, pressed completely, we're going to top stitch along each of the, I guess, outer, outer folds, the top folds. Each of these is the top of a card slots panel. So I have my um, stitch length set to four and a half. So it's like my longer top stitching length. And then I'm just going to top stitch each of them using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So once I have that done, I'm going to place a clip to hold the sides in place. Let me actually put a couple on here. And now we want to cut the card slots panel um, so that it is exactly four and three quarters of an inch tall. So I'm going to And we want to cut the top off. So measure four and three fourths from the bottom. And I'm just going to make a line with my chalk pencil.
So I'm cutting off just under an inch, but this way, um, having that extra to cut off, if your card slots were not measured exactly, then your piece will still be the correct um, height. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that. Okay. And now we need the card slot sides. And I'm going to place that right side down um, on each side of the card slots. Now we're going to switch to shorter stitch length and I'm going to use a one quarter inch seam allowance here to sew down each side. Make sure that you back stitch at the start and stop. Now I'm going to press each of the card slot sides away from the card slots panel. And now I'm going to top stitch along each of the seams through the card slot sides and the seam allowance using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And again, I switched to my longer stitch length of four and a half for the top stitching. Okay, so I'm going to use my pattern piece to mark the snap placement on the lining front or the lining pocket flap. Um, I'm marking this on the right side. You can mark it on the wrong side. It really doesn't matter because that's gonna be covered with a snap. All right, so I have scraps of interfacing. I'm going to fuse this over the wrong side all right, and that's just going to help the fabric to be a little more sturdy um, so that the snap won't rip out. If you have fusible fleece, you can go ahead and use a scrap of that if you prefer. Um, I'm going to, with my seam ripper, very carefully cut the slits for the prongs on the magnetic snap. And now take one half of your snap. It does not matter which half. Place the prongs through the slits. Place a washer on the back. And then I like to close my prongs in. Um, some people close them out. I don't know if it matters. I don't know. I think actually last time I closed them out because then it lays a little bit flatter. Whatever. But. If you have manufacturer's instructions, you can follow those. All right, so 
once you have inserted inserted the snap now I have my card slots panel and I'm going to place the um, front or the pocket flap right side down with the assembled card slots and I'm going to clip this together along that top edge and then I'm going to sew this together using a half inch seam allowance going to press this flap up away from the card slots um, and press the seam allowance up as well. All right, so I'm going to top stitch along this seam using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, and now I'm going to press the sides of the card slots under um, by half an inch. So you'll be folding them back so, so that they meet with the raw edge of the um, card slots. So I'll press this just like this. All right, so I press this under by half an inch and then I'm going to unfold it, um, but the creases remain. And then I'm going to place my exterior contrast um, pocket flap right sides together and I'll be matching the top and side edges. And then I'll just clip that together all the way around. All right, now we're going to use a half inch seam allowance to sew this together. Starting at the bottom of the exterior contrast pocket, or pocket flap, whatever it's called. side and now I'm going to trim this seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch um, just where I sewed not not down the sides of the um, card slots And then we're going to turn this right side out. And then I have my turning stick that I use. So I'll flip that right side out and then I use this little stick to really smooth out the curves. And I'll press that well and at the same time repress those sides of the card slot panels um, back by one half of an inch. Alright, now we're going to top stitch 
around the flap only. Um, and I really want to kind of start up here. So I'm going to sew on the exterior side, but I'm looking for where that seam is and that's where I'll start sewing. I'm using my longer stitch length. And I am going to back stitch a couple of stitches. And I'm just going to take my time around this curve. Especially since my um, top stitching thread is contrasting to this navy fabric. So. And then when I get back to the other side, again, I'm looking for where that seam is. Um, and I'll sew to that point and then back stitch a couple of stitches. slots onto the exterior main that has the zipper attached. So I need to find the center along the bottom of each of these. I'm just going to put the tiniest little clip right at the edge so that I know where the center is. And then I'll do the same with my card slots panel. Fold that in half to find the center. I can crease it. This fabric creases pretty well. Um, so then I just match the centers along the bottom. And I'm going to place a few clips to hold this in place. And then I'll also throw a few pins on here. Let me mark this really quick. So when I stitch this down, I'm going to sew up half an inch past um, the seam on the flap. So I'm going to use my ruler and a chalk pencil. You'll want to make sure that this mark is something that is erasable um, because it will be visible. So I'm just going to use my chalk pencil to mark a line across that that's half an inch from the seam. So I'll pin along that. I'm making sure that my lining is pulled back out of the way. Do not sew through your lining panel. going to start sewing at the bottom. Using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and my longer stitch length. And I will sew all the way up to the marked line. And just make sure that you keep that lining panel pulled back out of the way. And then when I get here, I'm stitching directly over the top stitching that I sewed on the flap. Pivot. I'm going to sew now directly along the line that I marked.
and then you can erase the chalk line. Um, all right, so for the front pocket, we want to take the exterior contrast front pocket panel. I'm going to um, finger press this to find the center. And now I want to measure, um, let's see, I think three inches. Yep, three inches up from the bottom and centered to find my snap placement. I already fused a scrap of interfacing to the back. If you have um, fusible fleece or something thicker that you'd like to fuse, you can certainly use that. Oh, and also some people, when they cut the slits um, for the prongs, they'll use um, fray check or glue along those slits so that the fabric doesn't fray. And all that just helps to hold the snaps in place better. So we're going to Insert the snap. And I am actually going to open those prongs outward. And we're going to place those right sides together, matching all of the edges. And then I'm going to sew using a half inch seam allowance up both sides and along the top only. And my shorter stitch length. And I don't have interfacing on the um, po pocket lining panel because it gets thick in the bottom seam. Um, so I tried to decrease some of that bulk. If your sewing machine won't sew through thinner layers, if you have a walking foot machine, um, feel free to interface that, obviously. Now we're going to trim the corners down and you want to get pretty close to the stitching um, but obviously don't trim through it and then I'm going to trim the rest of the seam allowances down as well. And then I'm going to turn this right side out and press the seams well. Make sure that you poke your corners out really well. Um, so I'll use my stick for that and then just press it really flat. All right, we're going to top stitch now along the top edge only using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So first we want to, on the lining side of the pocket, we want to measure three inches from each side and draw a line. Um, I'm going to use my chalk pencil for this. So three inches in from this side and draw a line all the way down the length or the height, I don't know. And then three inches from this side also. All right, now at those marks, we're going to fold the pocket 
um, right sides together so that that line is right inside the fold. And I'm going to press that really flat. All right, so then we have these two creases that I just created. So I'm going to top stitch along each of these using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I have my longer stitch length from the bottom to the top. And then I'm going to make sure that I back stitch at the top. And then again on the other side. So now we want to open this up so that it's laying flat again and using my chalk pencil I'm going to let me actually trim these little threads okay so now I'm going to measure I think two inches yes on the right side two inches in from each edge and make a line And then I'm going to press along that line right sides together. All right, so once those um, lines are pressed, we're going to top stitch right sides together so you're sewing on the lining side of the fabric. Again, make sure you back stitch at the top. And then the pocket should naturally lay flat the correct way. And there's your pocket. So now we'll take the um, exterior main that has the card slots attached. I need to find the center of the bottom of this. And I'm just going to finger press and match that up with the centers of everything that's attached already. The um, front pocket should be just like an eighth of an inch wider than the card slots on each side. So I'm going to go ahead and clip this in place. And if you need to pull that out, Slightly you can so that it is an eighth of an inch wider than the card slots. Okay, and we're going to using the longer top stitching stitch length. Oh, actually, good catch. Make sure that your um, lining panel is pulled back away from this. Do not sew through that. All right, so we want to start at the top of the pocket, and I'm just going to sew a few stitches and then back stitch. And sew all the way down the side, across the bottom, and I'm just keeping this at an eighth of an inch. Um, you could use a quarter of an inch across the bottom. Thank you. 
to baste this. It will be in the seam allowance later, so as long as you use less than half of an inch, that's fine. And then an eighth of an inch up the other side. Make sure that um, your snap clips in place okay and then I'm going to press this just all right so the front um, exterior is now completed the pocket has an accordion style so you can easily access your cards that are in here um, this is a good place to throw you know a chapstick a house key this is more of like a, a minimalist type hip, hip pouch um, so you're not going to carry a lot of stuff in this so just for when you're out and about and you only need a few things. I personally would take this to like an amusement park. I don't want something bulky. I want something that I can keep on when I go on rides. So, so we want one of our lining interior zipper pocket panels. I'm going to measure down one inch from the top. Um, where can go? All right, and I'm going to on the wrong side, draw a box that is six inches wide and one half inch tall. So I draw one six inch line, another six inch line, and then connect them. And each of these, this first line is one inch down from the top and stops one inch in from each side. We are going to finger press this to find the center and finger press this also to find the center. So then lining the centers up, I want um, the top of this to just touch the top of the lining main. And then you can go ahead and pin that in place. I'm just going to throw a couple clips on here. And then using a shorter stitch length, we're going to sew all the way around this box, directly along the lines. All right, and just like the other zipper pocket, I'm going to draw a line directly down the center of this box, stopping about half an inch away from each end. And then I'll draw a line to each corner from the end of that line. And now I'm just going to cut along the line. Be careful not to trim through the stitching, but get as close as you can to the corner. And that helps your pocket lay flat. All 
corner right and then I'm going to um, push the interior zipper pocket through the hole and press it flat to the wrong side. All right, I completely pressed the interior zipper pocket to the wrong side of the lining main. And now I'm just going to, this is just a regular old school glue, glue stick, Elmer's. And I'm just going to put a thin line along each side of the opening. And my zipper is way too long. This only needs to be six inches. <clears throat> but I'll just trim the rest off. And I'm just going to place the zipper within the opening so that it's centered. All right, now I'm going to carefully slide this over to my sewing machine. And I'm just going to top stitch all the way around the box. And I'm using my longer stitch length, so And now I'm just going to trim some of the excess off. And I like to keep this wide enough so that the edges of the zipper tape are caught in um, the seam allowance here. So now I'm going to take my other interior zipper pocket panel and place it right sides together with that one that's attached. And I'm just going to clip this together along the sides and top. All right, and then we're just going to sew this together using a half inch seam allowance. And I sew it from, with my lining main right side up and then I just fold the lining panel back out of the way. We're going to trim the seam allowances of this down to about an eighth of an inch. And that just helps to keep that out of the way. All right. 
we want to unzip both of our zippers completely. And now I'm going to place this lining main panel right sides together with the lining main that's attached to the front of the bag. And I'm going to clip together all the way around the edges. <clears throat> All right, and then I'm going to sew this using my shorter stitch length, and I'm just going to start at the bottom of this uh, diagonal side part and I'm using a half inch seam allowance and I'm sewing it with my um, exterior right side up and then just folding it back out of the way as I go and then you'll want to make sure that you fold the interior zipper pocket panels um, out of the way as you sew across this part. If it got caught in the seam allowance it's not really a big deal. Which is a good thing because that's what I just did. So we'll see what happens because it's going to stay that way. It's just the very top of it. And I am sewing directly over the ends of my zippers here. Now here, make sure that your um, interior zipper pocket is back out of the way. All right. Now I want to trim this seam allowance. down to about an eighth of an inch and I can trim off um, the ends of my zipper also. And just make sure that your um, exterior main stays folded back out of the way and that you don't trim any of that off on accident. All right, now I want to take my other exterior main and place it right sides together with this one. I'm just going to clip together all the way around the edges. And 
We'll do it with this side facing up. And now I'm going to sew all the way around the exterior means, also using a half inch seam allowance. All right, and now we're going to trim this seam allowance down also to an eighth of an inch all the way around the exterior means. Alright, and now I'm going to turn everything right side out through the opening in the bottom of the pocket. So just reach in and start pulling things out. Now 
Um, if you wanted to make this like just a real simple, quick little uh, fanny pack type thing, you could skip the whole front pocket and it would be like a super quick project. You honestly could even do it, um, make it out of like vinyl. Oh, clear vinyl could be fun and skip the lining. So I'm going to use my stick to make sure that everything is pushed out. Um, and then I'm going to press the whole entire bag really well and then press it nice and flat. All right, I pressed the whole bag nice and flat and I also turned the raw edges of the opening at the bottom of the interior zipper pocket inside um, by about a quarter of an inch. And I pressed that well. So now I'm just going to clip this opening closed so I can go ahead and top stitch my pocket closed. I can't even tell you how many bags I've made that I forgot to close the pocket on. Um, so that would always be one of my fears if I sent a bag to somebody that the pocket would be open. Um, and I've had people check before to make sure I actually closed the a hole in the bottom of the pocket. Alright, so I'm going to push that pocket back down inside. All right, and now I already pressed this really well. Um, I'm making sure that the lining is up in the top edge. Switching to my longer stitch length of four and a half. And this just helps the, like, the bag to lay flatter. So I'm just going to start here and I'm going to sew around I'm top stitching around each of the tabs and along the top of the bag. And now we just have to um, make our connectors and our strap and then we're done. So here's the bag so far. With each of the connectors you want to first fold the short edges to the wrong side by a quarter of an inch and press. So how I like to do that to make sure that I have them even, I'll draw a line half an inch in from the raw edge.
and then I'll fold the raw edge to the line and I know that that way it's a quarter of an inch. So let me press those. All right, now down the center lengthwise on the wrong side, I'm going to draw a line. And then I'm going to press each long raw edge into the center. All right, and now we're going to slide a D-ring into the fold of each. So after I pressed the long raw edges into the center, then I folded it in half, bringing the short ends together and pressed there as well. So then we're just going to slide it on I'm just kind of eyeballing it to make sure that it looks even. I'm going to actually clip both in place before I sew anything to make sure that they match. match. So I'm just centering it along the end and then making sure that it's um, nice and tight to the edge of the tab portion. All right, make sure they both look even. And then I'm going to start sewing directly beneath um, the hardware as close as I can get to the hardware. You might want to use a zipper foot for this. Um, I use my narrow zipper foot for everything. So if you have one of those, um, if you don't, maybe see what narrow foot options are available for your machine. Um, they're very helpful for getting close to the hardware. And then I'm just hopefully catching the back and front at the same time as I top stitch around this. And then we'll repeat that on the other side as well. And then you can always always reinforce the stitching with an X, um, stitch an X through the center of the tab as well. All 
All right, so then at this point, if you want to install rivets, you could install a rivet directly through the center of each of these, um, which I think I might do that, but I'm going to make the strap right now. I'm going to press this in half, wrong sides together, and then open that up, press each of the long raw edges into the center crease, and then fold in half and press that so that it's one inch wide. All right, so I pressed the strap in half and then folded each long raw edge to the center and then fold it in half again and press well. And now I'm going to top stitch down each long edge of the strap using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Fully expect to run out of bobbin thread at any moment. All right, so I have my hardware here. I honestly don't know where I got these. I think I don't know. Maybe Emmeline bags. It was either Emmeline bags or more Mino. I think. All right, so. First, I'm going to guide my strap up through um, the adjustable slider. I press one end under by half inch, and then another, nope, just half inch. And then an inch, I guess, is where um, it's into the bar. So really just press that under by half inch, and then um, slide your hardware close so that you have enough room to, I'm going to sew one line here, back stitch across the same line of stitching, and then stitch across again. My sewing machine is not happy with me. And then I'm going to do the same at the end of, do it from this side, near the fold. All right, and since my sewing machine's being a pain, I'm not going to back stitch across that because for whatever reason, my machine does not like to back stitch across thick, um, thick spots. So it's easier just to rotate it and stitch forward. And again, this is somewhere that you could use a rivet if you wanted to. So I'm going to slide a um, swivel clip onto my strap and then bring the raw end of the strap back up through the rectangle and back over the center. So it should be like this. And here's where I always check to make sure that it adjusts properly. So make sure that you can slide it. All right, and then we're going to repeat on this end the same process. So I'm going to press this under by half an inch and then under again by a full inch. Um, and you can press this flat, obviously with the iron. 
and then I'm just going to sew through this as close to the hardware as possible. And then one more line near the fold. And I stitch across this a couple of times um, so that it is secure. And that's it. So then you clip your strap onto the D-rings um, and then that's how you put it on and you can adjust it to fit your waist. So hopefully you enjoyed this. I hope you make some. Super quick project. Um, quicker if you leave off the front pocket but again that front pocket has the room that you need in it um, for cards. Toss a chapstick in there. Maybe your house key and then, or maybe a good place to put your key in the zipper compartment, um, things you don't want to lose, you can place them here, but I think this would be good for, you know, like an amusement park or something where you don't want anything too bulky and something that's slim that you can wear even on rides or whatever. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll share in my Facebook group. I'd love to see what you make. Thanks for watching.